Welcome to Colony TV, the governmental educational channel for the town of Colony. Welcome to Getting to Know You. My name is Joe Nash. Today we're going to be talking about the Partners for Albany Stories. It's a group of 12 um, historical cultural preservation groups. They've all joined together. Um, they have this plan for um, promoting um, historical, the history of our area in, in various ways with these 12 groups. So today we have with us Wendy Birch. She is the executive director of both the Tenbrook Mansion and the Albany County Historical Society, and Kathy Quant, who is the head of the um, Albany County Convention and Visitors Bureau. So welcome, thanks for coming. Thank you. So Kathy, why don't we start with you. These 12 groups, I'll, I'll just read a, a few of these here and then people will get the idea of, of what we're talking about. It's, it's you guys, Albany County um, Convention and Visitors Bureau. We have the Cherry Hill um, Mansion, Shaker Heritage Society right here in Colony. Schuyler Mansion, Tenbrook Mansion, the Underground Railway History Project, which is right down the street from Tenbrook. We have the Capitol. Um, they, they have tours, and you know, then they have a historical thing on there. And the Albany, um, Albany Institute of History and Art, which I did not know until today, was started in 1791. I did not know that. So, <laughs> so you can tell by the, these groups I'm talking about why these 12 got together for this um, partners for Auburn, maybe you could just tell us what this is all about in a general way. So. Sure. Um, well, I think partners started back in the year 2010 when the historic sites, um, the state historic sites were facing closure. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of was a, a flag um, to the vulnerability of historic sites locally. Um, so we have decided to create this group called Partners for Albany Stories and the composition of the group really is focused on um, historical, cultural, and preservation groups. So you'll see Historic mm -hmm. Albany is involved. Um, the Convention and Visitors Bureau um, is involved for um, two purposes. One, the Convention and Visitors Bureau is the tourism promotion agency for Albany County, but we also run the Visitor Center for okay. the City of Albany, so a lot of history um, within, the, within that Visitor Center. And we decided that this collaborative could create or develop um, what is already in place, but um, we could comprise a story of Albany. So we take Albany's history, we develop themes, and we, we pull those themes together mm -hmm. so that there's one comprehensive story that we're beginning to tell. So you're gonna, hopefully all 12 groups will somehow work together to promote each other and have tours or whatever. whatever. Yeah, that's, that's the um, goal down the road, the end product. Um, Right now, what we've been working to do is to develop the story itself. Um, we are, we've, we've looked at possible themes um, mm -hmm. of the stories, um, and this is kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but we, over the course of the summer, we brought in scholars from outside the area to have, us, have their perspective mm -hmm. on what Albany's themes are. These scholars have had past um, experience with Albany um, projects that they'd okay. worked on, um, and they uh, helped us to develop those themes a little bit more thoroughly. Um, we will eventually develop a draft theme that we will take out to the public. So okay. this is not just us as a group developing the story. The, the real goal is to get the community behind it okay. and supporting it. Um, and eventually those end products okay. such as tours and programs. So Wendy, you know, you're involved in the Tenbrook Mansion and your director of Albany County Historical. What, what does it mean for not when or um, Kathy's with the city of Albany? But what does it mean for these um, organizations? This this idea. How do you? How does it strike you for? Um, you know, well, when you first, first heard of this. Sure. Well, first of all, one of the hardest things for us and all the nonprofits, I think, around every probably everywhere, is getting the word out that you're there and you're doing this great mm -hmm. programming. And so all of us working together, it. It helps us um, to, to kind of market ourselves 
um, it's easier to market ourselves if we're working as a group than singly. So from my perspective, you know, first of all, being with the Albany County Historical Association, I mean, that's our mission. You know, we want to preserve and present Albany's history. But the other side of it is, is that um, if we come up with this, you know, this, these interpretive themes for the city and we're able to um, reach the public with it, um, it's, you know, think Boston's Freedom Trail. Yeah. You know, people will really want to come and explore Albany's history, and that's really what I think what we really want people to okay. do. Now, do you, do you think, or maybe you could both a answer this, but do you think that we're um, aware of our history? <laughs> I mean, for example, I lived in Philadelphia for six years, uh, from 1990 to 1996, and I... I never went to the Liberty Bell. I don't know. I mean, do you think I mean, we all know this is a historic place? And but how aware do you think people are? I don't know. Do you want to both maybe answer that one? Um, being in the visitor center, I, I think you see um, community from both from both. Um, you see sides. visitors and people from. Yeah, and um, sometimes uh, local community I think is very aware of their history. It depends on the person. In other cases, I feel sometimes as though the visitors <laughs> to the no area more. have no more than, than we do locally and are more um, promoting of, of the local areas. So, you know, that is certainly a, a huge goal of this program is really to get the community to embrace what um, this city has in terms yeah. of history and culture. Well, I know that um, talking about history, Albany was founded in 1609, which is right around the same time as Jamestown and Plymouth. And when people think of Plymouth and Jamestown, they think, ah, oh, the first first settlement, first colony. When you say Albany, you don't usually think that. And we're, we're just as old as um, as Jamestown and Plymouth. Is that? Yeah, and really, Jamestown and Plymouth Plantation, nobody lives there anymore. They're, they're yeah. pretty much historic sites themselves, whereas people are still living and and working in Albany. Well, they Jamestown and Plymouth both have um, places you can visit. It's like a recreated, yep. I think. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with Albany is, I think, maybe I'm, are there any remnants of the original, there's no real, or maybe, I don't know, maybe, are there any remnants of the original colony or town or city here other than some of the older mansions? Or? Not not going back yeah. from the original development, no, and that you know that's the hard part sometimes in, in interpreting yeah. um, is the story is there, but sometimes the the physical presence is not, and um, that can make you know that can make it a little more difficult um, well, I, to do. Well, I know right here in Colony, the um, the Shaker Village is a lot of that is pretty much in, as it was back in the well, that's the 1800s. Albany was started what in. The, 1609, I, I looked up here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what are some of the um, things you're talking about getting together and, you know, get, what are some of the things you hope to to do with these 12 places? Like, I mean, you know, all these places have their own website. I, I, I notice they all always have um, events and uh, um, re, re, uh, reactors sometimes, not reactors. Reenactors. Re re you know, and I, I know that Cherry Hill, they had a thing with the murder, they do all that occasionally, and so there's always stuff going on, and you're doing um, the Underground Railroad Project, they have an archaeology camp there every year. So what are some of the things maybe, I know you don't have the, it's just starting out this summer, but what are some of the things you hope to get to as an overall, you know, I mean, do you have it yet, do you have the overall theme um, yet? Or? Well, I, I think a lot of cooperative programming, um, what we have found and, and a lot of our partners have found, we, we, a lot of our partners currently work together already. Okay, yeah. So for instance, the, the, at the Albany Visitor Center, we, we run a lot of school programming um, and we've got programs in place with Historic Cherry Hill and Cralo, um, Tenbrook Mansion, the Albany Institute. And what we find is when those partnerships are strong, that it really creates a, a stronger bond and creates um, more promotion and creates more attendance for each of our sites. And so I think the more collaboration yeah. that we can continue to do and in different ways that can start to bring the public in as well and, and eventually visitors from out of the area into that programming is what our aim okay. is. Um, so whether it's uh, you know, programming at each of the sites. It could be exhibits. Um, it could be bringing collections out that maybe we don't see on a regular basis based on a theme that yeah. we've all created. It could be developing mobile apps. Um, it could be it could be developing a cell tour um, for for the city as well. So 
those are just um, you know kind of mm -hmm. scraping the surface there. But. So now we're filming this in um, late September. Now, is it just you said just started this summer the, the the genesis of getting this all together? Actually, we've been meeting now for a couple of years, and we've been very methodical about developing these themes. Um, but what I meant was, it, right now you're finally at the point where you're going to go forward we're, with trying to develop. We're trying to, yeah, we're kind of yeah. launching it now to the public because now we're at the point where we want to get the public involved. Okay. Now, now um, that, that when you're down at the convention and visitor center, do you do you hear from visitors that um, there's not enough stuff here, or there's not there should be more, or why no. this place is pretty famous? Why why isn't it more visible, or is there anything like um, that? No, we we don't really hear comments like that. What we do hear are comments of "Wow, I never knew yeah. what Albany had to offer." Uh, your architecture is beautiful. Um, it, there's so much history here. It's it's all very positive, very positive things um, mm -hmm. that people are saying about the local area. Um, and again, I, I, I think sometimes our own community doesn't see yeah. that, and so we, we hope that that will happen. The scholars that we had here in the summer and who developed um, helped us to develop some of the themes, we're going to be testing those themes okay. out. So our, one of our next steps, um, in, in fact starting within the next few weeks, uh, is to develop what, what are called focus tours that we will be inviting the public in to hear what those themes are, okay. the content of those themes, and get the reaction back. Um, this is the first step in really getting the public involved in the whole process. Okay. Now, is there, is there a web? How can people get involved if they want to? I don't know, Wendy, do you know what? We, um, we have an email if anyone is, and we'll be reaching out to different okay. groups, but if anyone is interested in being a part of one of these focus groups, we have an email. It's albanystories at gmail.com. Okay. But you, you don't have a website at the moment? Mm, no. No, okay. But it'll be on the screen here. It'll be, um, what was it, Albany? Albanystories Albany Stories at gmail.com. Gmail okay. And people can also email any one of the partners, too, and we can pa you know, pass that along and, and make sure they know when these focus okay. groups are going to be scheduled so that they can come. Now, since you're at the Tenbrook Mansion all the time, and you know, I know you know everyone in all these other places I mentioned, mm -hmm. what are some of the things they have talked about, like I just asked Kathy here about, what do visitors maybe not? What do they say about Albany and some of the? What are some of the reactions? You know, I can echo what Kathy said. Um, you people come; they don't realize what how much history right. Albany really has, and when they find out, they're they're fascinated. But it's it's just a matter really of 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 reaching out to the people that haven't learned yet that there's so much right. history in Albany. Well, um, then I guess my next question would be this: since this is what you guys are actually doing, so. <laughs> If you could sort of change one or two perceptions of Albany, what, 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 what would it be the like number one and two? What, if what was one, or if there's one of the things you'd really like to change, a perception of Albany, or, do you have any, any 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 ideas about that? I know there's always kid people always kid around call Albany small but small Albany sometimes, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I well a, a couple things. Um, one would be that sense of place, um, that sense of, um, of, of of really knowing the community that they live in and understanding the value of that the community presents mm. in terms of history and in culture, um, under you know realizing and exploring and taking advantage of all the programming that is happening in the area, which is so rich and um, happening every weekend yeah. and things going on constantly. So I think to um, kind of the o open the eyes of some people who may be naysayers or may um, think of Albany as too small mm -hmm. um, in some respects, that, um, that we're, we were the launching point for you know, this nation and its growth. And uh, it's, it started here in Albany. That's so right. I mean, uh, even you go back, not just the Revolutionary War and stuff, you, know, you have the um, Erie Canal and mm -hmm. all came yeah, through here. Yeah, the westward expansion. It all it, it started here, and we we need as a community to 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 find that value and to really again embrace it and and, and understand it. Now, I all these um, twelve places at the end we'll, we can we'll scroll the names of all these places, but why do you think? I mean, these, like I said earlier, these places all have events all the time. I don't know what attendance is. For, I don't know if it's declining or not, but 
do you see people not interested in history that much? As, as I know visitors sometimes come come to places specifically for history, but I don't know. Do you think the people who live here are, are what are they busier these days, or are they just not interested, or what do you what do you think about about? Um, I, I think a lot of it is just getting the word out yeah. to people so that they know. I think, you know, once someone, you know, finds out some interesting fact about Albany, they're they're surprised and they're mm. and they're interested. It's just a matter of getting it out. And I think that there's been a little um, less of an emphasis on history oh, yeah. in recent years than um, than before. Yeah. So. I know occasionally we have stuff here at the library. Um, of, about local history, and we usually have a pretty large, you know, pretty big crowds. Mm -hmm. And I know the Shaker Historical, over by the airport there, they they always have good crowds for a lot mm -hmm. of their. Um, yeah, based on the topic, you can really, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, you can really get the attendance, whereas others may not be as strong. I know so. whenever we have anything to do about the Civil War, it's, mm. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> <popular. huge. laughs> um, Well, down the road, before we, this is somehow only a small part, but maybe Kathy, you might know. This is a small part of something even larger called the um, the Albany 2030 plan. What 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 is that all about? And how do, how does the um, Partners for Albany Stories fit into that, or does it fit into that? Um, the 2030 plan is is um, it, it's another plan that's been out in the public eye and and has been out for public input for a number of months, and the plan is now in place. It's a comprehensive plan for the city in, in, in many directions, uh, very much. I mean, not just the stuff you guys are talking about. Oh, no, yeah, not at all. But it's, it's, it's very much economic development focused. Okay. Um, we fit into it in that um, historical, cultural portion mm -hmm. of, um, of, again, working. Well, same thing we've just been talking about, working with a local community um, to educate and to um, you know f help them to find that value again in the community. If, if we can create a local community who really can um, um, enjoy the story of Albany and understand its value, it's going to be that much easier in terms of promotion of bringing, you know, in, in, in tourism promotion well, and bringing people into the area as well. well. Plus you have, um, what, 400 years of history, right? I mean, that's, that's a, lot to, a lot to draw from. It mm -hmm. isn't like it's a place where there was, you know, one Civil War battle or something. But we have 400 years of history, right, from colonial revolution and right up to the, the whole Hudson Valley uh, Civil War, Erie Canal. Mm -hmm. I would just say that's why it's been kind of challenging to come up with these historical yeah. themes because we want to be able to include you know everything so that you know people realize that you know it's not just about the Dutch, it's yeah. not just about the fact that we're the capital, there's so mm -hmm. much there. So there's, well, there's stories to be told about the development of the area but also about industrialization, the Erie Canal. Um, the African American, you know, Underground Railroad. Um, there's so many underlying themes from all those those um, times in history. Um, the stories of, of people um, is a huge part of what we're trying to, to get across too, and and the challenges they had in, in developing the area and in um, you know uh, finding their way to, to yeah. freedom and. There's a huge amount of stories to be told. Well, this goes back farther than the 400 years, but I know this fall, the Albany Institute is going to have a big, they're having a big thing about mummies, mm -hmm. the famous mummy collection, because so, we're kind of involved with that. They might, I think they're coming to our library. So speaking of that, now, Wendy, why don't you tell us, so you, you, you were going to mention that you have some events of this fall, upcoming events this fall at some of these places I've mentioned, like Schuyler Mansion, Tenbrook Mansion, um, Historic Cherry Hill, Underground Railroad, the Capitol Tours, and et cetera. Sure, just, just, just to mention a few things that are going and on. These are the kinds of things that go on all the time. Yes. You know, regardless of the, what you're up to now. Yep. So. Um, I know the Underground Railroad on Tuesday, October 23rd, from 5 to 7 at their site at the Stephen Herrett Myers House is doing a, a national archaeology celebration. Uh, I don't know all the particulars on it, right. um, but I do know that our um, camp this year, archaeology camp, actually dug on the, the property of the Underground Railroad, okay. and so they found a lot of really interesting artifacts that I would hope might even be on display by and, then. And there. what was it? They're, what, what did you say they were doing? They're it's a national archaeology celebration okay. that they're doing. Um, they also, this is a little bit in the future, but they have their, they do an annual conference every year, a public history conference, and this year it's going to be in April 2013, but they're doing Milestones on the Road to Freedom, Emancipation Proclamation, Harriet Tubman, and the March on Washington, okay. a legacy 
advocacy in the future. So they have that coming up in April. Um, Shaker Heritage is doing their craft fair again this year. That's that, around Christmas time, right? It is. It starts. They have a preview on Friday, October 26th from 6 okay. to 8, and then after that it's um, October 27th through December 15th. Yeah, that goes, that goes for several months, right? It's, yeah, it's very popular. Um, they also are doing kids' crafts workshops okay. on November 17th, November 24th, and December 1st. Um, Historic Cherry Hill has got a, a series of events going on as well. They've got... Um, uh, a, well, they've got a lecture, Sex, Love, and Money, The Murder of John Whipple. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be happening, they have it um, two times. One is Saturday, October 6th at 1 p.m. at the Albany Public Library. And the other time will be Wednesday, October 10th at 2 p.m. at the Pine Hills Branch Library. And um, Is that the murder that yes, supposedly yep. happened in the house? Yep. And did it did happen. Yep. And they've, got some, <laughs> they've actually got a, um, a murder at the mansion, a dramatic walk through a murderous evening where you actually get to go okay. and go through Cherry Hill and um, and they have several times for that. They've do, they're doing it Friday, October 26th. There are three different times they're doing it and Saturday, October 27th, they've got, I think, five times. I know that the Capitol tour. tours, mm -hmm. I know they mentioned the ghosts, but is there a, is there a separate, like, ghost they tour? They do do ghost they tours do at the Capitol. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think I, they're starting very soon. Yeah, yeah. so it's very popular. Um, and Cherry Hill's also got another event, uh, Spinning Wheels, Aprons, and Lace, Material Life at Cherry Hill in 1827. And their curator will be talking, um, just taking their collections yeah. and highlighting them, which I think will be really interesting. Um, you know, at the Tenbrook Mansion, we're doing, um, we are doing a little fundraiser, which is a paranormal investigation the right, you, Saturday before Halloween. But we're, we're not doing Haunted Mansion this year. We're actually okay. going to do um, a fall harvest festival. That's a free event that we're doing Sunday before Halloween, October 28th. And we're going to have. Tenbrook Mansion. Yeah. So that'll be um, crafts and games, kind of Halloween themed. We're also working on having um, fresh produce and a lot of education about um, harvesting and the growing but, season. But what was things. the paranormal thing you were saying? Oh, they're doing. An, uh, an investigation um, that night. It, so uh, and now, didn't you did, did you guys do that before, or is that something we haven't? Similar? We have a group that volunteers with us, and so they've they've actually done some paranormal investigating. But this is something we actually learn their techniques and okay. um, what they do. So so they'll, they'll teach a little bit about the history of the mansion and the people there, and then they'll okay. do the yeah. Now, Kathy, anything for Albany this fall coming up? Certain for the visitor center or. Yeah. Um, most of our efforts right now are focused on um, school programming. Um, okay. Right now we're hosting a lot of school programs, um, school tours for the Half Moon, which is the replica ship of oh, uh, Henry Hudson's boat. Is that um, going to be here this fall? Or is it's it, here. It's here it's now. Here now okay. um, through another week and a half. And um, so we are hosting a lot of school groups for that. And we're... We are in the process of, of developing a couple school tours, um, one with the new partners with the Albany, with the Dutch Apple Cruises, okay. um, and that will be um, learning a little bit about Albany history in the Visitor Center and then yeah. going on board the Dutch Apple and having um, learning stations aboard that, so oh, okay. a floating, floating classroom. Per now, se. You, you actually bring the kids on the Half Moon? Um, the kids do go on the Half Moon, yep. They come to the Visitor Center. Again, they learn a little bit about, you know, why did Henry Hudson sail and here? Yeah. And, and then they go on board the Half Moon okay. and see what it was like Did he, like, take a wrong sail. turn or something? Or is that... uh, <laughs> <laughs> he he had a, ended up um, at New York Harbor and found the passage up the Hudson on. and decided to follow. Now, are, are you there when the kids, what do kids think of, because I've seen it, you know, a few times riding by on my bike, and, you know, you know, when you think of the old, you know, whatever, 50 people, the thing is tiny. I know. But what do kids yeah. think of it? I, I... They, they absolutely enjoy and love the tour. It's, it's perfect for fourth grade students because okay. they're learning New York State history. Um, they don't go out. They, they don't sail. They don't out, sail, no. no. Um, but the, there are schools that are involved in sailing the ship okay. up to Albany. Um, so some some school kids oh, do okay. get that experience of actually sailing on it as well and learning about um, environmental issues and um, what it was like to really sail okay. on aboard it. Yes, it's extremely small, and I can't imagine sailing I across I mean, the I, ocean on that. I think it's like the same size, more or less, as the Mayflower, isn't it? And didn't the Mayflower have like over 100 people on it or something? Uh, it, yeah, yeah, I, I might I, be wrong on. But even the Mayflower sure. itself is pretty small. Right, right, so. right. So. And Wendy, what about what are some of the reaction of the public? Maybe people not from this area when they come to Tenbrook. What do they have to say about um, 
You know, it all depends. You know, some people just want to come and look at an old house, and some people are really interested in the people that live there, and some people are interested in the architecture, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's all different. So that's one thing about giving tours at the Tenbrook Mansion and I'm sure other historic sites is that, you know, it's every tour is different because people have different interests, and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun okay. interacting with them. Well, before we end, anything else you want to add? Um, Just that I, you know, I really hope that, you know, people who see this um, and are interested in getting involved at all, really, we, we do want the public's mm -hmm. um, reactions to the themes and because, you know, we're, we'll use that feedback to adjust and, and, and we really, we want the public to embrace this, this project that we're working on. And it, on. it will be going on the next, what, I think I said, I think I read in here, is it going to be 20, next summer it'll be starting up for sort of starting up or our hope is by you do the focus groups this fall and then we will have focus groups this fall and then we um and, and everything depends on grant money That's as well we're, we're working to get <laughs> grant money so as grant money comes in the next portion of the project will be to um, develop a written draft of the interpretive plan along with illustrations okay. then we take that we'll we'll revise the themes prior to doing that and then take that back out to the public um, so that's going to probably take us through another year, and okay. then um, eventually, when that when that uh, interpretive plan is completed and the community backs it, then we'll start thinking okay. about some of these programs and and but, products. But in the meantime, all of the local cultural, historical, preservation um, organizations are open. Most of them are open all year round, aren't they? Uh, pretty much, mm -hmm. yeah. You can always Exceptions. find out about history down there, and if you want to be involved in this, you can email. It's Albany Stories at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll, as, as the show ends, uh, we'll put the, um, all the names of the places we've talked about if people want to get involved. They all have websites, I'm pretty sure. And you know, if you're interested in history, look for Partners for Albany Stories in the next year or two. So thanks for being here. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having you. And we will see you next time on Getting to Know You. Mm -hmm.